put like some of the comfortable on for size here. Okay. It's time for the lead block. Lead block. Lead block. Lead block. Lead block. All right. Last summer, it was the scoop of Back Together Weekend when P. Shregs got Aaron Rodgers to sit down. But we needed Peter here in Los Angeles in full GMFE prep mode. So yep. before the Jets closed out their first week of training camp on Saturday, we still got Rodgers. And this time it was with our own Brian Baldinger and Judy Batista. There's a lot of sentiment that last year wasn't a great year for me. <laughs> so I'd like to still have two great years. Aaron, you come, you came from Title Town, USA. Yeah. There's a long-standing, frustrated Jet fan base here. Like, can we, can we leave this and end this today with a message to these Jet fans that are going to be out there at MetLife every Sunday, starting, you know, preseason games? Well, first of all, since you mentioned it, I want to give a shout out to Jordan Love becoming the highest-paid player <laughs> in the NFL. There you go. J Love, yeah. don't spend it all in one place. But if you do, I still have Allison Green Bay that's up for sale. <laughs> there we go. Uh huh. I bet he does. It's a hard That's house awesome. to sell. It's a hard house to sell. I've been to that house, by the way. Oh, I'm, how is it? You've been yeah. to Rogers' house in Green Bay? Yeah. Yeah. Outside in the front. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Did he in invite you inside? I walked my brother's dog in front of this. Were you doing oh, for Amazon? Like, what no, was I was trying to get in. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. So last year, it felt like the obvious topic at training camp was all of Rodgers, Rodgers, Rodgers. Yeah. But there's a couple of things we got to spread our love to this offseason. What's the top thing you guys are watching out of training camp right now? You know, Jamie, we see Rodgers right there. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard not to be intoxicated <laughs> and look at that and be like, he looks good. He seems good. He seems fresh. Yeah. In New York this summer, every step I took, it, it was – they look good on paper, but I learned my lesson last year. Not this year. I'm not falling for it this year. The Jets, to me, are the biggest storyline going in because it's like we press reset and it's a redo. Everything about last year that we were excited about in August, everything last year from the Hall of Fame game to Hard Knocks to Rodgers coming out with that flag, we can redo it. He's a year older, a year wiser, and I think this team's better on paper. Oh, sure. Boy. They added Tyron Smith, okay? They, the, Vera Tucker's healthy. They drafted Olu, the big offensive lineman. They, they look better. They seem better. Rodgers is content. And yet the storyline is, do we fall for it again? Yes. And, and do we do this again? Do sure. We, yes. The Jets fans have the heart, the energy, the soul to go through this entire thing again, fall in love, get excited, and then set themselves up for a potential disaster. I, They've been hurt so many times. They have been hurt since so 1969 oh, every man. single year, mm -hmm. Kyle. And they'll tell you, the first thing out of a Jets fan's mouth is like, I was, uh, I've been a fan <laughs> since Namath. Yeah. 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 And like, I go way back. Go way back. My <laughs> old man, not my dad. My old man. You know, my old man. And we were at Shea. <laughs> Um, <laughs> they look great on paper. I was with the Jets in May. I went to one of the OTAs. I was there. I, I walked the grounds. Like, everyone's in the greatest mood, and they're like, this year we're a little under the radar. You're not under the radar. Mm -hmm. You got Aaron Rodgers as your mm -hmm. quarterback. I think that's the biggest storyline, because last year I picked them to win the AFC East. I thought they'd be a playoff team. Mm -hmm. Rodgers goes down four snaps, mm -hmm. and then we say, okay, well, that, you can't really blame me. Asterisk. Rodgers is healthy, mm -hmm. and he seems healthy up here. And the rest of the team seems to be on the same page. Really good, really young, and one of the best quarterbacks ever. My biggest storyline this week and going into this season is, is this the year, not last year, is this the year <laughs> yeah. that the Jets are going to be the team that we're talking about in January? It's okay to love again is what you're saying, right? I've had my heart broken. Mm. It's okay. Get out there again. Are you get okay? Yes. Are you okay? I, I think. Uh -huh. Okay. I feel all right. All right. It feels good. July. It's been four months of no GMFB. People were worried that we were going to, like, inherently drop the East Coast bias. But Peter Schrager talking Jets right just fits right. People are watching, like, why isn't Peter talking about the Chiefs? What's going on? New show. We'll get there, I'm sure, right? <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. Well, uh, Akbar's first segment here at the table. Yep. We have this rule here in Good Morning Football. Okay. Where, like, the 32 teams are all our children. Like, mm -hmm. we love them all equally, right? You know what I'm saying? Is like, we love them all equally. No, I have something in my eye. Okay. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite children is I love those Pittsburgh Steelers. I love what they represent. I love the logo. I love the history. And I love what's going on right now in Steelers camp. We got a really uncharted deal in which we have those two guys, Russell Wilson and Justin Fields, in a quarterback competition for Pittsburgh, which – I hear is wide open, and I think it's absolutely fascinating because you think, okay, so they move Russ in. This is going to be Chapter 3 for Russell Wilson. He's a legend. He's going to take over, and then Fields will be this experiment. I don't know because what Russ is bringing to the table, all this experience, all this winning, I don't know if it really means anything to Pittsburgh in the sense that, like, that franchise is beholden to nobody. They don't care. They're not going to make a decision because they should. That coach is beholden to nobody. He will do what he wants. And in a training camp situation, especially one where Russell Wilson starts out injured and is not playing, Justin Fields is 
way bigger. He is way faster. He is way younger. He is completely intoxicating. And I have a comp right now for what's going on in Steelers camp. If you're a fan, if you're a coach, if you're one of the teammates, Here's the picture of, of Fields and Russell Wilson. Just bring up this picture. This is this is how I see them right now in Steelers camp. There they are. <laughs> All right, so you got you got okay. Russell Wilson on the left. Okay. There's a snake in my boot, and then that's Justin Fields that comes in. Like. But when Buzz comes into Andy's room, all the toys are like, holy crap, look wow. at those wings. This is really fascinating. We, we respect you, Woody, and, like, you got some skins on the wall, Woody, and you might even be a Hall of Famer, Woody. But look at these blinking lights and that shoulder cannon. Uh -huh. it's, it's seductive. It's impressive. And the fact that Russ let him into the club, like, wow. I don't want Russ to get passed down to Bonnie. Wow. You know, you just get handed <laughs> off. Or worse yet, you're holding hands going down to that incinerator, Toy Story 3. It's a sad scene. Maybe Russ will win this, but I'm going to come out in segment one, show one. And predict, I think in the first game of the Pittsburgh Steelers, I think Justin Fields will start. I think Justin Fields is going to win the job outright in camp. Maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe it's be a hot take. I don't care. It's good morning football. I think that Buzz Lightyear will be starting for the Pittsburgh Steelers week one. I think he's going to win the job. Wow. wow. So, in other words, what I'm hearing you say yes. is that uh, Justin Fields is going to be a buzz kill to, nice. to Russell Wilson. A huge one. Okay. To infinity. Right. Huge. <laughs> you know and beyond. <laughs> Talking Pixar, the lamp. We love it. What do you think? What do you like? Well, you know, I'm looking at somebody who I feel doesn't get enough credit. When I look at his body of work, it's Kirk Cousins in the uh, okay. Atlanta oh. Falcons. Kirk Cousins coming off of this Achilles injury. I know we talked about Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Rodgers coming off of his Achilles injury. But to me, it's Kirk Cousins because I feel like wherever he goes – he just makes the team better. Mm. I think about the Washington Redskins and the struggle that they had early. And then he comes along, and everybody was hyping up RG3, and I love RG3, by sure. the way. But Kirk Cousins just came in, and he was just different. You like that? You like that already? I love it. Nice. I like it. But then I look at what he did in Minnesota, right? He had a slow ramp up. Then all of a sudden, he just turned things around. 2022, we just saw something different. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, my goodness, this is the dude that I want to ride with. This is the dude that I want to rock with. He comes into this Atlanta situation, and that Achilles is a little concerning for me because of his age. But if anyone can do it, it would be him. It's going to be nine months since he injured his Achilles tendon. I truly believe that he makes Kyle Pitts better. I truly mm -hmm. believe that he makes Drake London better in this situation. And these guys have a legitimate shot with Kirk Cousins to be a beast mm. in the NFC.